do have Angelina Castro calling in, so we we were gonna have a, a important conversation right now. Peace, Angelina. Hi, I was waiting for you guys on my Instagram for like ten minutes. I'm like, they're coming, they're coming, and then like maybe I have to go. A mess. Anyways, <laughs> I was like, are they coming? Like, and then I saw you live, and I was like, no, I'm supposed to um, go on there. So once again, me misunderstanding everything. <laughs> How y'all doing today? Honestly. <laughs> I am more confused right now than when I woke up this morning. And let me explain to you guys why right quick. You know, I recently did a video uh, from my very Cuban perspective of how I thought that Cubans were very hypocrites because they would be applauding what um a lot of people are doing right now the protests or the riots they will they will be applauding if that would happen in cuba and i didn't understand the reason why they were so mad about both i understand the riots because they are getting into people's property but you would applaud that if it was in cuba so you cannot have a double standard when it comes to here and then and here and there you know and i don't understand why they don't support the protest either and they always go back to all this other shit that i want to talk about and you guys have more an explanation why such as the guys criminal records such as but black kill black such as but a white person died such as all life matters such as there's so much going on right now that i i don't know how to articulate to explain to my community <laughs> from your point of view because I will never, ever know what it is to walk in black skin. I will never know what it is to be a black man. I will never know what it is to be a black woman because I'm not. So I thought. But by getting out of Miami, I realized that I'm just a Spanish-speaking Negro. <laughs> Well, I mean, I think it's very important to recognize from the beginning of this conversation, y'all just got dropped off before we did. <laughs> yes. Were slaves as well. Um, there were native native tribes that were in Cuba. There were native tribes that were in Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, Curacao, all these different islands or, or South, South and Central uh, America. There were native civilizations that were already here. Um, so when the Europeans, the Spaniards, the English, the Dutch, all these people came over here and they initially tried to enslave those people. But you can't really hold somebody captive in their backyard for too long before they escape, you know? So they, they and also a lot of the natives here in this part of the world had never been, uh, have, were very susceptible to European disease because they had never come in contact with things like smallpox or, or the different diseases that Europeans carry. So they decided next step, go to that Catholic church and get it sanctioned to start uh, enslaving people based on the color of their skin. And if you're a Cubano, you are mixed between the Spaniard, the African. That's it. The Stop there for one second, please. Let's just, let's just, for the people in the back. All right. What is a Cuban? An African? Half African, half Spaniel. There is no such thing as a fucking native Cuban. The last one was Atue and they killed the motherfucker. Point blank. We are Africa and Spain. Right? We Cubans are the product of violation. We Cubans are the product of rape. That's how the fuck we started. So, I don't understand why people don't see that. No goddamn slave say, ooh, I'm going to love my master. Let me go and suck his dick. No slave said that ever. We are all a product of rape. So I think one of the reasons that, that it is, you know, racism comes in many forms. And one of the, the products of racism is self-hatred. So when you look at a lot of uh, Latin cultures, it's very similar here in America. The more light skin you are, you got to work in the house. You know, the more light skin you are, maybe you got to play an instrument and you got to be around 
white people in a different way. And it was the same thing in, in Spanish colonies throughout the quote unquote new world that the lighter you were, you know, the more you were welcome within uh, Spanish society. But if you look at, um, like, let's say Peru, for example, you know, uh, the native people of Peru, the, the indigenous people were pushed out of the coastline, coastal areas, up into the mountains, up into the, to the forest and jungle and all of that away. So, you know, they had the cities where they had their black slaves. And then at a certain point when they, they didn't have slavery there anymore, everybody was pushed out. So there's a hierarchy between the people who were mixed with the Spaniards the, and, the, and the Spaniards who stayed as opposed to the Africans and as opposed to the native people of that land. And the same thing happened in Cuba. The same thing happened everywhere except Haiti because they won and they killed them and they kicked their asses out. I have a little list. Let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> first thing first. And I know Jasmine is going to totally tell me don't make it about yourself because by the by the way whoever doesn't know jasmine is very quick to tell me that i'm being like all about myself because she knows that i'm all about myself so i don't want to make it all about myself <laughs> all right and that's why i call her for every time because before i even gonna say anything or address anything she's like it's not about you so i know that this is not about me but i want to make sure i get this out there okay when i started the porn industry and then we're going to talk about everything that is going on, but I want to get the porn out of the way. Um, this is what pisses me off. Everybody's coming out saying, well, because recently things that we've seen in Band Brothers or because recently what Band did. And I'm like, I've been in the industry for 11 years. I started working for Band Brothers years, years ago because I said in every single interview that Band Brother told me that I was a fat bitch that sucked black dick. Those words hit their words. And I said, fuck you, I will never work for you. They called my webmaster and they told them that they wanted a banner for my movies on their website. I told this story to my webmaster. My webmaster said, fuck them. So I've been saying this in interviews for years and years. Why is it convenient now for everybody to turn and bang when this shit's been happening for a long time? Is it, is it okay to be this hypocrite and support the people that are turning their back? Or should we call them out and be like, Nah, motherfuckers, you knew this shit. It's just now not convenient to you because you're going to get heat. Yeah, that's, that's a really good, really good point because we're seeing this with not just, not just porn companies across the board. We're seeing this with companies that should not have uh, any bearing on race-related issues. You know, that um, it, it, we're seeing this in organizations. We're seeing this in personal people that we know that we're not concerned about our, our our freedom until, like you said earlier, there was a risk of their property being damaged. There's a risk of their bottom line being damaged. There's a risk of their reputation being damaged. And that's when this becomes important. I want to point out something very specific about Black people in, in this, this, this arena. We can say, oh, you know what? Pepsi's being nice to us right now. Like, that's cool. We'll take it. Bang Brothers, you, you have a statement? Okay, we'll start working with you. This protest is not about this week. This protest is about a lifetime of what will be our work. We're not going to sell ourselves out for these hypocritical statements from the CEOs of companies because we know that even if things get better for us, oh, next week it's going to be you. We know that next week it'll be... Um, uh, an affront against trans people or an affront against whoever, you know, whatever minority. I mean, just a couple of months before it was people from Central and South America, right? Um, and people said, oh, you, they made commercials for the Super Bowl and all that kind of shit. And then everybody went right back to business as usual. Yeah. We're used to people trying to use our our plight in this country as a little, kind of like a little carrot on a stick. You know, oh, we'll say something nice. We'll put a black person in a commercial and you'll get over it. We haven't been buying that shit. For a week. <laughs> and um, and so even if it means a little bit, a little bit of a kind of like a, a, a small little crumb from the table, we're not taking that anymore because we know what's going to happen, not just for us, but for those that 
those causes that will come after us. And that is what really, really upsets me when I talk to um, my colleagues like yourself. I, and I'm, I'm so appreciative that you came and, and asked us to have this conversation. And you, we've been having these conversations. But for a long time, Jasmine. Yes, for a long time, for years now. But when when you say it's not about about me, yeah. it, it, and, and let me let me kind of um, frame that, it is about you. And the minute that you can really see, and not you specifically, Angelina, but those, you know, our audience can see that this is about you. This is about what kind of world you want to live in. This is about, you know, yo, if they can just think, put a little paper and say, oh, yeah, we care about you, but still treat you like shit. Like, that will happen to you as well if we don't change the standards for how people should treat people in general. So if you can't see that racism in, in, it's, in all of its glory doesn't have an impact on you, like, I, I'm sorry for you. I'll keep fighting for you. And I hope that you'll come around in the, in the next couple of years. I want to say something because every time that we have a conversation and you make a point, I'm like, fuck. You know, we said, um, which I want to, yeah, it's true. I want to talk about um, the one-on-one -on -one black mother list for every single black kid, which I sent to you, Ugh. Mm. which I sent to you. And, and I say, I, I even make a joke by everybody that don't know, Keenan Jasmine has a beautiful baby boy that I call my Cuban baby because I call everybody Cuban just because that's just my comfort zone, which is wrong. It's just an inside joke. And I call them my Cuban baby. And I said to Jasmine, don't tell me that this is what you got to do with my Cuban baby, right? And she said, no, that's what you got to do with your Cuban baby. And I said, my son is not black. Why do I have to do that? Pause right there. Because if I allowed your Cuban, your African American baby, <laughs> it's okay, our baby, <laughs> our baby. <laughs> if I allowed our African American baby to be raised like that, because that's what you gotta do, so they don't kill my baby when he gets out. The next thing is gonna be my white Cuban baby, mm -hmm. and. <laughs> When you said that, I'm like, fuck, I still have to learn so much. If I allowed shit to happen to you, I am next. Yeah. And that's why my community doesn't understand that you is me and me is you. Because neither of us is white. Right. So. Absolutely. Yeah. And if it's and if it's not just along racial lines, it's along other lines. They'll say because you're an immigrant, or they'll say because you're Catholic, or they'll say you you because you're because you're gay. Whatever, whatever the case is, and really, it's like um, even if it's not gonna happen to you, you should raise your kids so they don't do it to somebody else. Right. You know. Right. Um, I remember having that talk with my mother when I was, I don't know, like seven or eight years old. And my mother was like, no matter how light-skinned you are, to the police, you a nigger. Yeah. I'll never forget that. And you have to be safe. And you have to know where you are at all times. You have to know if there are other people of color in the space that you are in. And, you know, you, you think about it. Other people don't have to live with that level of, you know, walking on eggshells mm -hmm. everywhere that we go. You know, it's like, you just want to go in the park and watch some fucking birds in Central Park and some white lady is calling the police and saying that you're attacking her and that your life can be over when those people, police arrive, right? So, you know, it's it's important that we, we, obviously, we all teach our kids to be respectable, to know where they are and, and everything that's going on around, around, around them. But for people who are Caucasian or passing as Caucasian or whatever, y'all need to raise y'all kids not to be racist and to let go of these biases that they have against people of color and, and dark-skinned people in general. You know? Yeah, I, I would like to not have that conversation with my son or my grandchildren or, yeah, I, I don't want to have that conversation. I really don't want to have to warn my children 
um, about the injustices that are going to greet them when they help. It could be when we're all together. It's not even no, no more where it's like, oh, if when you go out by yourself, we're seeing families being ripped from each other. We're seeing, you know, pregnant women being brutalized and tore out of their cars where a man can't even protect his protect his wife. So, you know, this even that conversation has to change. It's no longer the conversation of at some point when you grow up and you go out, police might see you. No, it's like it's now. I mean the police jumped out and killed Tamir Rice and he was a baby Twelve. boy. Twelve. A baby boy. You know, um uh it's it's not just boys either you have to have the conversation with girls too you know you have these situations of of police not only are they going to kill the the women they're also raping women you know what i'm saying so you got to have these talks with your girls about how to protect themselves from from predators and also that the predators are also supposed to be the people out there catching the predators so so here here's the thing they, these kind of conversations that we have to have i think what is really important for the for our audience to understand is this is what we're we're actually fighting so that we don't have to have these kind of conversations we actually would like to live in a space where if the logo is protect and serve then that's what we can expect it's kind of like when you go into any other business that you have an expectation that what is what you're going to receive for your money, our tax dollars, is exactly what they are suggesting that they're going to offer. So I don't really want to tell my children, you know, when you go into a, to, I don't know, let me just make it super simple. When you go into a burger spot, you got to be careful to make sure they might put a hot dog in there. Like, no, it needs to be what the fuck they say it's going to be. So the police department needs to police according to what we're paying for. But these ex- the conversations that we have to protect ourselves from the police, whether we're black, whether we're women, whether we're trans, whether we're little, big, all these, like, this this is a wasted energy because they, the, the problem is not, like, our kids don't know to put their head down or put their hands up. Everything that was on that list, they shouldn't have to know any of those things. The only thing our children should need to know is if you're in trouble, call 911. They'll come and help. Not be scared of calling 911. Yes. Oh. No, no, you, you go. I mean, I don't know. You tell me, Angelina. Isn't that what what white people are able to have with their kids? Honey, if you get into any problems, call 911 right away. That's the first number they teach their children. All right. I want to talk about a story that I'm not proud of. But once again, being raised on my Miami bubble has totally made me understand how I've done things wrong in the past. For example, I love black dick. Do I love black woman though? Is the question that I ask myself all the time. Mm. You know, just because- Do you I, love black men or do you just love black dick? Because there's a lot of dildos that I can send you. That is what I want to talk about. I love to sleep with black men. All my friends are black. All my friends are black, right? including women i have a lot of black women but my question is when all of these things are happening do i think of black men or do i actually have the passion and i'm trying to fight for black women and i had to ask myself that because there is a difference on people people yes it is so crazy and i have to sit back not now now i know the fucking answer 10 years ago, I had to sit down with my 10 year self, 10 years ago self and be like, would I be fighting for black men the same way that I am fighting for black women now? 10 years ago? No, because I did not understand a lot of things. For example, I've dated black men all my life. Black women couldn't see me because I was not black. So I had a lot of discrimination, which I understood because you said there is a difference between racism and there is a difference between discrimination. And there's a reason why certain things happen to you the way that it happened to you, which I totally understood. And I don't want to, I don't want to talk about that. Hang on one second, Angelina. Before we, before we move forward, I want to, because you said something that is very, um, it's kind of like, um, I, you always, you 
dated black men and black women couldn't see you because you were, were not black. I think you, you raised something really important with that, with that point. Black women actually really, really recognize that non-black women tend to like black dick, not black men. And it, however, it is very, very hurtful for us to see our men fetishized in that way. Yes. So when we see those examples and people say, oh, she's just, you know, what, what? She's jealous. She's angry. She's, you know, oh, she can't see me. No, we see you very clear. And we see that you love a portion of our brothers, our fathers, our sons. Our, we, we see that. That's it. We see you clear. It's not that we don't. Yes. We see exactly what you've come for. So. There's lots of, of, of relationships that are that are interracial that are truly based in in the love of, of the person of the individual. But I want to know. I want you to know that people who fetishize black people are incredibly transparent. We see right through you. So I, I think a lot of times black women are demonized by non-black women who date black men because they are unable to actually be honest with themselves. That they don't like black people. They yes. Like this one black day, or they like this one black guy, but they're afraid afraid of black people. Um, and I find it to be true. A lot of times, you know, uh, I've had horrible experiences on set with racist ass women who were at the same time like, "Yes, I can't wait to fuck you." You know what I'm saying? So, and and the same racist ass directors or producers that put together this scene because they want to fetishize me and fetishize me as well. And it's it's indicative not so much of just porn. I think porn is a microcosm of the larger society. If we look at the history of the United States, black body parts have always been fetishized. The reason black body parts have always been fetishized is because one, we were not human in this country. Two, we were attacked constantly sexually by both the master, the overseer, the mistress, and every other white person, for, for example, who thought it was uh, okay to rape and and pillaged and molest black bodies so then when we get to parts when we get to parts of black uprisings because don't get it twisted we fought every step of the way we fought from back in africa we fought on the boats and we fought every step of the way here in this country as well and with that you know the first thing that they do white people automatically think oh my god i raped all these people they're gonna come rape me or they're gonna come rape my wife you know if you look at um, what was done during lynching they wouldn't just hang us they would cut off our testicles they would cut off our penis they would rip babies from inside women's women's stomachs they would cut off breasts and they would save them as souvenirs they would keep our body parts as souvenirs think about that not our brains no penis Balls, breath, our wounds, mm. you know, and 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 and, and you, other body yeah. parts here and there too. But think about think about what that means. So now, when you get to the modern day that we're living in, people are still coming after those same body parts. Think about how people talk about black women's um, asses all the time. Look at how people are now going out to purchase a black woman's ass of their own. Lips, hair, you know, hips. Yeah, the implants have now they're coming around, you know. So, and and you, you know, as as a Cuban woman, you know what it feels like to be fetishized as well. How many people want to see a spicy Latina all the time? All the time, which it didn't bother me that much until I realized that I was that person once. And even though I didn't do it maliciously or like, nah, I ain't gonna fight their fight. I had to sit back and be like, fuck. I'm them, but I'm you. I can be both. <laughs> like, so it was, it, yo, it, take, <clears throat> it takes, it takes a lot. Not everybody have the, not everybody has you, you know, not everybody has uh, friends that can be, um, 
that could, could see beyond my flaws or what I might be doing wrong that I might not think that I'm doing wrong. I'll be like, nah, you're doing this because of this and you have to look at it this way. Like, I want everybody to have a you, you know, and not everybody can. So how can I help besides this explanation that you just gave me? How can I help all those people that I know out there that love black dick but don't love black men or black women? How can I help them understand? Because it was very simple for me because I had you. <laughs> well, you were also open and receptive to hearing that. Some of these people are gonna not be open and receptive because they're fucking racist. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's just who they are and, and that's the space that they wanna occupy. And those kind of situations is just be like, don't have nothing to do with them. I no just way. did a video. Those, those situations, they just gotta learn the hard way. I just did a video that um, I have never got so much a positive and at the same time negative response from my own community. And I did a video called The Cubans Hypocrites. And a lot of people my, our age, DM me saying like, yo, I just had to play this shit for my grandparents. I just had to play this shit for my aunt. I just had to play this shit for my, and it was in Spanish, right? Because I wanted to get the message across. I wanted to. So, um, which is why we're here today. I got the message across to them. A lot of people are dealing with trying to deprogram people like me, Cubans, right? Trying to let them see how they are being very racist because at the end, they know that they are good people and if they see in a different way, they will understand they're being fucking racist. I interview a guy today that is a prominent person for the civil rights movement. La Brigada, I forgot the name, Vigilia Mambisa, which is all advocate for Cubans and every... And the guy called black people, them, the guy said that black people, like it was just the most racist shit in the world. And I was like, you know, when you interview somebody, you don't want to give a reaction, but my fucking face says it all. JP was behind the camera. He was like, every five minutes, because I just wanted to get my point across. The guy does not understand that right now, and a lot of Cubans don't, that in America, black white and brown people are marching not only for civil rights also for police brutality also because slavery has not ended because if we allow if we are funding the police to kill black men and women that's slavery mm -hmm. there's a lot of things that people don't see because the tv and everything else makes us, Latinos, minorities, black people, thugs, they only put the looting. They don't put none of the positive shit that is going on. So that is what all these old fucks are goddamn listening to. And that's what they put in their mind. And you always see the black guy or the white guy with tattoos burning a fucking building. But you don't see the millions of people marching. They don't put that. So that is what... My mother and my grandmother, which is not the case because they got me, but whoever doesn't have me, that's what they seen. So you can you can do what you can do, right? Um, I think one of the important things for for this to actually have kind of like the chain reaction that we're hoping is that people start with the communities. First, like doing a check of, of, of your household, right? So it's like, you're like, you're good. Grandma, mom, they, they understand, they have me. Having a discussion with, with your your younger people in, in your, your family. What I'm starting to see from a lot of people is that they are reacting outwardly to the general public, but they're not checking their household, right? And so I can't get in your household and speak the language that you speak. And, and I'm not, when I say language, I don't mean Spanish. I just mean you, like the, the family language, of your the temperature of your household, right? Um, I don't know the history of like, oh, does grandma make racist jokes sometimes? And, and, and I don't know what little things I can actually say, hey, you know, um, sister, when you, when you do that thing, like actually that's kind of what black people are talking about. Like we need to stop doing that. If for nothing else, you don't want 
want the reputation of being a racist. It's, it's obviously not cool. Yeah. You know, you don't want to have to go on Instagram and apologize. So just like, don't do that. Um, so all of us, the people that are watching, this is it's a big problem. When we talk, like you said, there's police brutality. There's the intersections of women. There's oh, there's so much. So don't get overwhelmed because when we get overwhelmed, we get paralyzed. We feel like we can't do anything because it's too big so stay small one of the things that i did just just this week is ask people if you'd like to have a conversation with me about what's going on i'm available so then you don't have to go and have these confrontations with people who don't want to hear it like king was saying some people are just fucking racist and they're just gonna die racist but you actually open up the dialogue for people who are like you who are willing you know, you and I, we, we started having this conversation because it's something that you posted. And I was like, hey, if you're open to having a discussion about why I don't like this. And you were like, yeah, let's do it. And now look how many people you have impacted just by being open to have a discussion. And I didn't go saying, oh, Latin stars in, in the porn world, we need to have a discussion. It was just like, no, one-to-one. One-to-one. This person that I work with that's in my circle of trust, I need to have a conversation with her. And we did it. And look at that. We're talking to, I don't know, however many hundreds of people are watching this. Yeah. And not only that, you were able, and I've always said this, you had the patience, had the, the words, had the time that a lot of people don't put into making one person understand what they were doing wrong and one person understand your point of view and it's very silly when we say if you want to change your world change yourself for one step at a time but you did you did here we are years and years later without even counting with you guys i did something on my own because i did a run back then you know so and it's but i still have a lot of fucking to learn it's just in my mind it's in it's, it's in me for example i have my son that is 19 years old and i have my brother that is 21 years old my brother is a marine he's a a black man he doesn't see himself as a black man in america he's just seen himself as any other fucking cuban in the world and i keep telling him like nah you're a black man and he doesn't see himself as that because unfortunately my mom, uh, my stepmom is also a black Cuban that doesn't see on herself as a black person in America, you know? And my daddy is completely white and an idiot. He's like totally beyond all of the shit, you know? He doesn't even believe exist. He's not racist though, but he's like, no, I have never suffered myself. My son have never, I'm like, you're not seeing it? They're on the old fucking bo bubble. And I'm like, nah, you're fucking wrong. Period. But what, this is how hypocrite... Like we were talking about earlier, racism has a lot of effects. You know, a lot of times people, when they just think of racism, they think of, you know, a white guy in a pickup truck with a Confederate flag. Yeah. Which is also racist. But, <laughs> you know... Um, I thought you were going to come out and effects, say no. The effects that racism has on people of color is... Those small things, you know, when you when you never see positive examples of yourself, when you go to school and your teachers aren't like you, and you're only taught about European history, you're not like literally. They'll say this this week we're gonna talk about uh, fucking um, Christopher Columbus. That didn't do shit. They're gonna teach you about 1492. They're gonna teach you about Columbus. They're gonna teach you about what was happening in Italy and Spain and Portugal. They're gonna teach you about what's happening. You know, maybe France and England, but they're not going to teach you about what was going on on um, in uh, Puerto Rico or Cuba or, or in uh, in Africa and the different places where people were also doing things <laughs> in this time, or in Asia or anywhere else, Australia, all these other places. They teach you about very specific things to push for their supremacy. So for a lot of people of color, they don't want to think of themselves in that way, and if they have an out. They could be like, oh shit, I'm Spanish. I'm not black, even though they're darker than me or Jasmine. Now, I'm not black. I'm, I'm, I'm Dominican. Or I'm but the reason I'm why, King, the reason why that yes. happened is because we come, we, even though there is some type of racism all over the world, it's but not as is, hard sorry. as it is here. And we come from, from countries where, even though I, el negro, que no sé qué, it's not, we don't kill black people just because in Cuba. 
you know we just kill everybody you feel me but it's it's you know yes it's true people, people have been though subjugated yeah. along a racial hierarchy in latin america very similar to the caste system in india right or the caste system that was in uh south africa or the caste system that exists here in the united states the difference is if you do the history of what race even is, originally race was Negroid, Mongoloid, Caucasoid. That was it. Sounds right? like fucking dinosaurs, everybody. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> but, you know, when, when then we start getting into things of cultural or ethnicity or religion, some people were raised, like in, in certain Islamic cultures, they're Muslim. Their race isn't the first thing they push forward. Or if you go to certain parts of Africa, the culture is their tribe or what what cultural lineage of civilization they have, not specifically uh, a color thing. But in order for Europeans and white people to be on top, they had to make a different kind of distinction. And that was that white is right at all times and it is the top thing and everything else is below. So y'all can fight over your religion. You can fight over your ethnicity, your culture, and who's lighter and who's darker all you want, white people still gonna be on top. And that's the thing that people don't really uh, recognize because we are so, we're trying to run away from ourselves. We're trying to run away from our history and all these things that we've been told. Like, just think about it. Black as a color is the collection of all things in the universe existing at once, right? Black absorbs all light. Black is a very important color in our spectrum of life, right? But we're told black means sullen, black means dirty, black means all these horrible things, but it has nothing to do with the color, right? You're told that white is pure and pristine and all these other things. Right? Virgin, the good, the light. It's going to have to do with the color. There's no person that is truly, yeah, these characteristics that are placed because these people aren't the color of actual white no one is that color no matter how hard they try or want to be no one is that color right but they have to separate themselves and that's how it was done and we're still dealing with those effects today and god willing we we here to start changing that shit i want to talk before because we only have an hour and we got seven minutes left i want to talk about trevor martin <sighs> my neck hurts trevor martin right quick because that was my first encounter all right mm -hmm. tell you how um, I have to raise my brother differently than I raised my son, you know, even though they were both the same age. And when Trevor Martin died, I, I was like, when Trevor Martin was killed, I'm sorry, let me just rephrase that. When Trevor Martin was killed, right? Um, why was he there at nighttime? Why was he wearing a hoodie? And JP said, what's wrong with wearing a hoodie? I'm like, you look like you're about to rob a place. Why you say that? I'm like, because that's what people that rob places wear. Where the fuck did I learn that? Oh, motherfucking TV. That's what he, I, I, he had to make me understand. Like, it's very racist, lady. And I'm like, why? And I had to, and I never meant to say anything bad. It was more like, huh. It's like I have the white person in my mind being a rapist all the fucking time and touching kids. I have the person with the hoodie. I don't even have to see the color. The person with the hoodie is about to rob the store. Period. And that's what it was on me. That's what it was put in my mind and in my eyes and all this shit. You know? So it was bad. And I had to cut myself. How can we change that? Because I personally do not do the in porn which is the only thing that i can't control i don't do the serpent that sleeps with the owner of, of the master of the house or whatever the fuck you guys want to call it because i don't do those kind of movies because they value the spanish woman i don't do the you know i don't do the shit how can i raise my kids and the people around me better not to see a hoodie as the person is about to rob the store i don't think it's a hoodie it's that he was black no, 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 no. Oh, well, listen, listen, just check real quick. There's a coach for a football team, the New England Patriots. Bill Belichick wears a hoodie every fucking day. 
Don't nobody say he looked like he about to go rob a store. No, but that's not what my... No, I understand your point, but I said in my mind, if you wear a hoodie, you up to no good. Let me, let me flip it for you, Angelina. These, these are called stereotypes. These are how stereotypes fuck us up. This is how stereotypes get people killed. When you, you, what you have on right now, right? Like... I'm a hooker! Yes! Yes! Boom. Yes! Yes! Yeah. I look like a hooker. We do know that. <laughs> because we know you. And that that is something that that it's not a it's not a prejudgment. It's not a discrimination. It's not an assumption. I know you. Yeah. You know, we are we're a little crew of sluts. Yeah. Right? However, somebody who doesn't know you should not make that assumption based on the stereotype that a woman who wears booty shorts and a and a you know a crop top should be treated a particular way yes so, so you do experience this prejudgment stereotypes in a way that can get but not for my skin color and that's what made me be like another uh, i had a lot of uh in my life when it comes to this you know and i'm very grateful i keep saying i'm very grateful for you guys i'm very grateful that you guys take the time to explain these things to me, even though I already come into the conversations or the questions knowing that I'm wrong, I just want you... It's good that you're willing to do so. And I actually do want to address something that you had mentioned earlier and someone keeps mentioning in the comments, and this is very important. Someone keeps talking about Chicago. <laughs> this is the thing. People kill who live close to them. No one ever talks about white-on-white -white crime. A lot of white people kill white people every year, nonstop. White, there's a white person killing a white person right now as we speak, and it must stop, stop white on white crime. But when people keep trying to flip it to Chicago, right? This didn't happen in Chicago. Number one. Mm -hmm. Number two. When we're talking about people killing people regardless of their color, if they're criminals, they're criminals, and it's criminals killing people. We're talking about the police who are supposed to protect people, killing people, killing citizens. And I think that it's also very important, the phrasing that people use. People are always like, the police kill a black man. That automatically makes all these white people not give a fuck. Mm -hmm. Or it automatically makes a lot of people think, well, he must have been doing something wrong because he's black. He was wearing a hoodie or whatever the case, right? Now, if you start saying police are killing American citizens, Police are killing innocent people. Police are killing an American citizen who was uh, accused of a traffic violation, and now they're choking them to death. Or in this case, uh, uh, a, misunderstanding. a misunderstanding, basically, because it wound up being a real $20 bill. Now, in, the, in these kind of cases, the reason that people use the Chicago argument is because they want to take it away from what the thing actually Justified. is. Justified! So, yeah, they want to justify it in whatever way. And they also try to use that to make you think that black people don't care about black people. I guarantee you right now, if I take you to uh, Uzbekistan, there's a whole lot of Uzbeki on Uzbeki violence. If I take you to Hong Kong, there's a whole lot of Hong Kong on Hong Kong violence. If I take you to a black neighborhood, black people live around black people, There's gonna that's going to happen. But the only time that it's ever mentioned as a thing is when it's black on black. Because America people want to justify it. And America uses this to justify how they treat us across the entire world. So as America ships out black culture as the number one thing that America wants the world to know about, our music, our dance, our songs, all of these things, athletics, whatever, people also wonder, well, why do you keep killing those black people? Oh, black or black run. But... There's just as many white people killing white people, but then not getting killed by the police. When the police show up to arrest somebody who's just committed a mass murder, they walk those people out. They took Dylan Roof after he killed people in the church to go get a fucking Pepsi. They took him to Burger King. You know what I'm saying? So it tells you, even in these situations, there is 
this racial element. So you can talk about that stuff in the comments as much as you want, but really the truth It has is nothing to do racist shit going on. It has nothing to do with what we're here for. It has nothing to do with the fact that there is police brutality. It has nothing to it's like the same conversation that I'm trying to have with the people, the people that are protesting on the fucking looters. It got nothing to do with that. It's just it's stupid. You know, that's not you know, don't take the 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 focus from where, where the fuck we're talking about, which is what I keep telling all these people. Yeah, right so before they say, we... When they say they, they want to talk about Chicago, I say, sure, let's talk about Laquan McDonald and how the police murdered him. I mean, it's, it, that's not what it is. We're talking about police brutality. We're talking about that the fact, besides police brutality, who are they brutalizing the most? You know, right. so that is what we're here to talk about. Quick question before we go. Instagram only gives us an hour. I am super confused about cultural appropriation. What the fuck? Explain this shit to me. I don't understand. Am I culturally appropriating anything? I'm fucking yeah. black too. Like, explain yeah, this to you me. You don't get to pick and choose when you want to... When, you when want I want to be black. black. Or when I... Okay, no. I'm not black. I'm Cuban. I'm Cuban. When I talk to people about religion, are oh, you culturally appropriate? I'm like, no, bitch, I'm Cuban. But Cuba is a place. Cuban is your nationality. Cuban but I have a culture that comes from Africa too, and there is a lot of things that I do that, you know? So let, let me kind of, um, look, ew, there's, so many, there's so many things. Cultural appropriation is, is a, a very huge thing. Um, let's see, let's do like uh, braids, for example. Let's just do braids. Um, you ever seen a white girl or a Spanish girl with braids in her hair? Weave, with weave, long. Uh, yeah. Right, exactly. Okay, so the, so you might take our style, right, and you'll benefit from it. Oh, you you know, oh, you look so you look so pretty. You look so exotic. You're doing something different. All those kind of things, right? But when I wear braids, uh, my my natural culture, right, and I try to go to work, is oh, your hair is so distracting. Do you wash those things? Oh, maybe you should take it out and straighten it so it's a little bit more, you know, relaxed. So when, when we see someone taking something that we have been, yet again, brutalized, mistreated, kept out, discriminated for, and you can take the same thing with no appreciation and no credit to my culture when you wear and enjoy it, that's a problem. You share that thing with me about Justin Bieber. Fuck, fuck him. Cause yeah, we know you've been dancing to our music. You've been, oh, we know that. We we know that all along. The only problem that we've ever had is you're only mentioning it now. You're only giving credit. And you're mentioning. And you're only appreciating it. It's not cultural appreciation. It's appropriation. Ah. You take it benefit from the shit. You don't give any credit for it. And you don't care about the people who it's attached to. I mean, look at, let's say, somebody like, uh... Kim Kardashian! Let's talk about the Kardashian! Hold on, let's, let's say, like, Post Malone, right? Throughout the 80s, throughout the 90s, and most of the 2000s, hip-hop was viewed as thug music. We were... It wasn't even considered to be music. It took no talent. It was trash. It was this, it was that. Eminem comes along, all of a sudden, white people feel that it's the greatest music on earth. And now you get to a point where you have someone that's like Post Malone, who wears the tattoos on his face. Yes, and does everything from hip hop culture, but he comes from uh, a wealthy family. You know, he at the same time has called his music not hip hop, you know, and speaks as if he didn't get his whole style and his whole swag from black people, right? That's appropriation. Kim, and, and the Kardashians. Yeah. The, the Kardashians, uh, all of the different uh, enhancements that they've done, well, done to their body, um, styles with their hair, their the the latching on to black athletes to promote themselves socially, all of those things, but appropriation with no appreciation. There has never been a time where Kim Kardashian has said, "I really love the fullness of African American women's lips." And I want to emulate that. The bitch just started acting like they just woke up one day slow. Like that, no. And and at the same time, if you go into if you if you see some of these racist forums 
when they talk about us and our features, they'll say, oh, this big lip African, the way that they talked about Michelle Obama and her features, these are the exact same features that people are having injected into them to look more like us, benefit from the attention of our beauty, but not appreciate it. We don't like that shit. It's not a compliment. It's it's cool to look black but not be black. Is that what you're saying? Time to be black. Yep. Then all of a sudden, everybody's like, no, this shit fake. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, and you know, the, the thing for having these discussions within yourself as well, it's like, if, yeah, like, I, oh, I like this weave. I like sleeping with black men. All my friends are black. I love black music. All of these, all of these things. Am I willing to sacrifice for for the for the the our creativity are you willing to sacrifice for the pain that we put into our music are you willing to speak up for the fact that you can wear my fucking weave but i can't you know i was i was called i was called racist i was called racist the first time in my life for voting for barack obama because i became a u.s citizen to vote for Barack Obama. I paid $1,200 to vote for Barack Obama. For the only reason that he was black. Because I I was called racist because of that. And I still don't understand why was I racist for it. Uh, I paid $1,200 to become a U.S. citizen that year to vote for Barack Obama. Because my black friends needed it. Because I wanted to see that change. Because I wanted to vote for a different president. I could have voted for fucking stupid ass Marco Rubio just because he was Cuban. You know? I was called racist because I voted him just because by his skin color. Was I racist? So th that, that would be the correct term to use, racist. Um, because you didn't have... Well, it's interesting because you do have power with the vote. But um, I, I think that with Obama people did not pay attention to his policies as much as they paid attention to this is like the first time in history there's a chance that a black man can become president and what this will mean for me to be able to see somebody that's not white in a position of power I just, you know and i think a lot of people took a risk that look i'm gonna vote for him because he looks like me or looks like people that i love and i hope that his policies are good I don't think that was good decision making, but I do understand why we arrived at that decision because it's we have been so uh, we've been so conditioned and depleted from having seeing ourselves in a position of power or influence, and to think the man with the highest position on the land might actually know what it feels like to, to be not black. Be white in yes, like I could have got a pair of red buttons for twelve hundred dollars. Now I voted for Obama. I pay my way to vote for Obama. And I remember that I watched the share with Eddie. Eddie's 19 now. Eddie was eight. Eddie was eight years old back then. I watched it on a, on my friend's house that she lives in a predominant black neighborhood. And the joy that I felt when everybody got out, oof, got out of the house got, screaming. Got five seconds. Okay, fuck. Screaming, it was amazing.